and welcome back. In the previous video of this series, we went over the work that the tire shop did. Uh, again, just to recap, put some narrower rims on it so that the tires fit within the fenders all the way around and the suspension work done on the front. And I also made a comment about the work uh, that still needed to be done uh, by a dealer for a recall, a safety recall, and that was the transmission shift interlock. And what that does is it keeps you from putting the vehicle in the gear unless you got your foot on the brake, uh, you know, in the key in the ignition. And uh, that has been fixed. I'll show you that here in a moment. But I figured it might be fun to do this first. Cold start seemed to be popular. So, camera's not going to do this justice. But I'm going to set you up here. And I'll be right back once I get it started. I'm gonna make sure I just need to make sure that you're stable and not gonna fall over on me. Like I said, the camera audio probably will not do that justice, but I figured it might be fun. So let me show you well, exactly what I mean here by transmission shift interlock, as Dodge calls it. So right now, I'm just gonna put the key in the ignition, turn it on, and you'll notice I can't put it into gear. Once I put my foot on the brake, however, now I can. Take my foot off the brake. Again, can't put it in the gear. So what was happening, what the recall is about, is about uh, under certain circumstances, the solenoid or the pin, the mechanism that locks the shifter in and keeps you from moving it unless you've got key and ignition and foot on the brake will stick in the open position, meaning it'll stick where this is always unlocked. So what was happening was you could jump in here at one point and literally with no key and ignition, no foot on the brake and just put it down in gear. So if you have a Ram and you've gotten notice in that uh, transmission shift interlock uh, recall needs to be performed, by all means, get your vehicles down to the dealership and get that taken care of. Because if that issue does present itself, and that's an if, then you definitely don't want to be in a situation where you can just grab this gear select, drop it in the gear with, uh, you know, again, without having to have the key of the ignition or the foot on the brake. And credit to my dealership is when they uh, saw me register this vehicle as well as the 2012, which will be our next project, they actually sent me a postcard in the mail for each one of them and said, hey, we, we just noticed that you just registered these two vehicles. Uh, FYI, 
the the following recalls have not been performed yet so that's how i was aware now there's also websites that you can check where you can plug in your vin number and it'll tell you whether certain recalls have been performed or not but again heads up to the dealership that i go to because they actually gave me the heads up that that needed to be performed but with that being done we are complete as far as the build on this project all that is left at this point in case anybody was wondering i think i've mentioned this before we're at right now we're at 193,857 on the clock and i think we're at we were at 193,000 something when we first got the truck uh, i'd have to go back and look at the footage but as of now we are complete with this build we've gotten everything addressed on this particular engine that we were i shouldn't say engine but on this particular vehicle that we were looking to get addressed i am not aware of any more outstanding issues for broken items things of that nature the tpms light again as i stated in the last video is uh, has now finally fixed with the replacement of the sensors when the tire work was done and with this last piece this shift interlock piece being taken care of by the dealer yesterday uh, we are complete that leaves us just the 500 mile break-in that needs to be done at this point once that 500 mile break-in is complete then we should then be able to do one do the 500 mile oil change we'll put the oil change on it we'll put a fresh oil filter on it we'll put a fresh air filter on it uh, for the uh, obviously for the air intake and then we can schedule to get this uh, vehicle dropped off to its forever home which if you're just joining us for the first time seeing this video then what that is is that we are donating this vehicle to a family member who is in need of a vehicle and again it's going to go to them uh, free of charge and what i'm looking for now is the is it under system info i think it's under system info engine hours yeah i'm not seeing it i'm looking for the i don't know if this particular style of truck has trip information that's the setup that's the average miles per gallon reset fuel economy no i do not want to reset you can see we're hitting about 12.4 miles to the gallon uh is what at least the computer is figuring that we have for our current gas mileage now keep in mind we're, we're still in the break-in period for this engine so we've been doing a lot of city driving deliberately a lot of starts a lot of stops we, we did take it out on the interstate a couple of times yesterday to get it to and from the dealer so we got it up to 65 70 plus miles an hour and held it there for at least for a little bit of time like i said we're just kind of varying the speed doing a lot of city driving a lot of start and stops uh, Ooh, that's right. It's got the old school push button. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. So what I want to do is I'm going to reset this trip. So trip A has now been reset to zero. Well, I'm going to reset them both. Why not? So 459 minutes. So zero, zero on trip A. I should have reset this when I got fuel. But to be honest with you, I'm used to everything being on the being on the steering wheel, being up here in the bigger area rather than the little area. So uh, we probably put about 100 miles on this uh, since the first startup and engine rebuild is done. So we got about another 400 to go. So I'll use the trip counter uh, to keep track of that. And then, like I said, once we hit that 500 mile point, we'll give everything a once over. We'll put some fresh engine oil in it, a new Wix filter, and a new air filter. And like I said, we'll schedule to get this bad boy dropped off to its uh, forever home and uh we will film that uh, I'll, I'll film the journey so you can kind of see how things go because uh the location we need to go to is about three three and a half ish hours uh from where i live so it'll be a it'll be a good drive we can film we'll, we'll time lapse it so we can condense it and uh again provided the recipient's okay with it we may we may have the recipient on video we may not it's uh, completely up to their wishes uh, if we if we don't have them on video, then we'll at least try to get some some audio clips in there again. If if they want to say anything, if they want to remain completely anonymous, uh, that's okay too. Uh, but there is one thing that I thought of, one final thing that we can do to the engine on this vehicle. 
uh, before we before we consider things good. And let, let me pause you and I'll bring you back one moment. And welcome back. So you may be wondering, what is the one thing that is missing on this engine that if you are a Hemi owner, you, you may or may not agree that this uh, needs to be there. And you'll see that we've taken our air tube off to give us the room to put on here what has been missing on this engine from day one. Even from the, uh, we received it this way from auction, so this has been missing for a while. But, thanks to the power of eBay and used car parts, in this case I should say truck parts, we were able to get one. I spent a little bit of time masking it off and painting a certain area to kind of make it a bit more presentable. And it's not perfect, but into those back tabs first feels like we're there there's that tab there's that pump and that pump there we go beautiful we can see that okay perfect so we got that piece in we got that hose accounted for now let's get our air cleaner back on i should say our air tube or snorkel however you want to call it Just going snug, just hand tight on that. You don't have to go complete torquage. It's just a clamp to help hold that boot in place. There we go. Put it locked back now. And perfect. Let me get you picked up here. There we go. Now, now it's proper. Now we're good. I, I know it's just an engine cover, but. Uh, Again, and I, uh, I tried to do my best job of masking all this off and hitting the lettering with some uh, silver or some aluminum paint that you see there. But I think it turned out good. I think it sets the engine off well, and I, I think it uh, is a nice, uh, nice conclusion to the engine work that's been done to this vehicle uh, thus far. But you know, let me know what you think in the comments. I, again, I know a lot of people don't like the engine covers, but uh, I like them. I think they serve a purpose. But with that being said, this is going to be a um, relatively short video. I will uh, create another video in which we kind of go over a summary of everything that we did to this particular vehicle uh, since receiving it from auction up to this point. So we'll go over a summary of all the systems we covered, um, all the parts that were replaced, all the items that had to be repaired, you know, wiring, you name it. So we'll, again, we'll do kind of a recap video on that one. But I just wanted to use this one to, again, let you know that the dealer has finished their work, the tire shop has finished their work, and with that uh, symbolic engine cover, if you want to call it that, um, we are complete at this point. We are good, uh, provided that nothing happens in the 500 mile break-in. Like I said, we'll be able to perform that service and send this, truck, send this truck to its intended home. And with that being said, I do thank you. And uh, if you've uh, hung around this far, and maybe if this is your first time seeing videos in this series, uh, please go back if you would like and look at the entire playlist. We're at 68, 69 videos at this point in which we've uh, attempted to document at least as in much detail as we can from the start of receiving the truck up to this point 
um, if you would rather also maybe see some 2500 uh, footage then we also have a playlist on the channel that covers the last set of upgrades that we did to our, our 2500 here the 2500 has been supercharged for a little over three years at this point and last year we went with a beefier can uh, beefier cam sorry non mds solenoids hardened push rods so on and so forth not quite the aggressive upgrade that we did to this engine uh when we rebuilt this one for the second time uh but uh again it were part they were parts on the 2500 meant to complement the supercharger even more uh, on this one if you're curious when we had to take the engine out and have the block machined when we put it back together we did go with a slightly upgraded cam non non mds lifters hardened push rods and like i said we made it a bit beefier but it does still run a factory tune so that's the important matter the only thing we did as far as the tuner on this one was to uh, turn off the mds and correct the tire size uh, within the within the uh, P, uh, pcm itself but i'm rambling too much i'm getting into too much detail uh, all of that will be covered in the summary video of exactly what we did but if you haven't subscribed to the channel thus far, please consider doing so. Uh, we are at 1,090 uh, subscribers. I think we just clicked over to, if I remember correctly. So we're right on that 1,100 uh, subscriber cusp. But with that being said, I will let you go. And I thank you. And I'll definitely bring you back. Once again, there will be a summary video done on this one in which we kind of cover everything we've done from day one till now. And then we will definitely uh, do some type of a um, handoff video, if you want to call it that, or, or giveaway video, maybe more appropriate, when we finally are able to take this uh, truck to its intended owner. And then we'll go from there. With that being said, I thank you much. Bye.